Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Tamiya's latest release. This is the brand new 148 scale F4B Phantom 2. Who knew the world needed another Phantom? Of all the kits they could have come up with, they've played safe. And this is a topic which I won't go into depth here, but we've spoken about on our shows, especially our live shows, a lot of times about manufacturers having a bit of a tight line to tread. As in, if you go a little bit too left field, no one's gonna buy your kit. And you've got all that money tied up in tooling costs and obviously with the manufacturing and everything, let alone selling the kit. Okay, so you don't sell many of them. And then everyone sort of, you know, complains when you play safe and you do something that everybody knows you're going to buy like 109s phantoms things like that but anyway they have done it and to be honest with you until a few years ago there wasn't many choices the only one really you had out there for this particular one being the f4b was the old hasagawa kit the trouble with the hasagawa kit though is it was raised detail it's one of their only phantoms of their fantastic sort of century series of phantoms that they did uh, which was actually raised panelized all the others were recessed like the j's and the later ones and things like that so anyway this has arrived now it's expensive we'll just get the elephant out of the room you know whilst you look at other manufacturers they're around about the sort of 45 and then sort of 65 pounds this one's going to set you back about 100 quid so it's not cheap so it better be good anyway looking down at the box tammy a sort of standard type of box art for this one as you can see right the way through we do have some nice markings with this one as well. So as you can see, we've got the standard sort of air-to-air -air loadout here. So we've got some of the uh, earlier sidewinders, and then obviously we've got some sparrows down there, the fuel tanks, uh, and away you go. So anyway, some very nice ones down in there. And then we've got round on here. Your kit number for this one is 121. And now on the other side, we've probably got the most famous one of them all, the Sundowners, which I've done this one, not the Tamiya kit. Uh, I did the Academy version in the Sundowners again. So beautiful markings on this one. And as you can see, some of the details are just down the back there. So in the box, you are greeted by a lot of plastic by the looks of it. So what we've got down in here, we've got the wing spars, all separate bags as we would sort of expect, well, almost separate bags. Okay, so we've got some seats down in there, tail planes, the other half of the tail planes. It looks like we've got full length intakes, which is a very nice touch, and some poly caps down in there. We've got the underside of the F4, instrument panels, various things like that, some of the taily bits. Uh, we've got a wing spar, which is quite nice, and some tanks and various things. There's the key bit, the fuselage. Okay, so we've got the fuselage down in there. Let's see, and then obviously we've got the top parts with the navies bits in there uh, we've obviously got the main intakes and then obviously we've got the cockpit bits down there okay wow okay that's weird isn't it there we go we've got a ninja star no we don't we have all the clear parts fair enough keep them somewhat separate uh tail planes down in there cockpit parts again so we've got one piece rear if you wanted to do it that way which is fair enough and then down in here we've got uh, the weapons so we've got some sparrows down in there and obviously the actual sidewinders in there like that we get a very large chunky pack here with the various things and obviously we've got the decals and a mask set so uh, if we start off as always down in here get in well, so he destroys the bag trying to get in here. There we go. So, in the first one, we've got the usual tips and trick sheet, which is nice. Okay, we've got a lovely pullout, which will keep those separate. We'll look at those in a moment. We've got a information little sheet, which isn't like the cat and grab we did recently, where it was actually in colour, which was a really nice touch, but this one isn't. But anyway, talking, obviously, as you can see down in here, about the Phantom itself and the amazing J79 engines. And obviously, a lot of it is because it was used in Southeast Asia, as you can see just down in there. Okay, so that's going to fold up. So there we go, we've got a bit of a history bump. And we've got the actual instructions themselves, which are stapled together, so it's a nice touch. Okay, so. Here we go. So starting off, as you can see, straight in with the actual cockpit. So we've got the bulkhead, I do believe, that goes between the pilot and the Rio. And then obviously you've got the Rio's a uh, little bit at the front here, down at the back as well for the rear station. And then obviously you've got the side panels being fitted down onto these. It's talking about picking out the colours onto this one. And then we've got the side consoles themselves. Being Tamiya, I imagine this being a bit like their F-16, it should be really, really nice. Uh, so you really probably won't need any aftermarket down into this. Okay. Then uh, under here, let's go 
again, we've got something which I'm assuming is the wheel wells. Okay, yes it is. So underneath here we've got this tab system which is intriguing, uh, which is quite nice. I haven't seen it before on Phantom, so we'll see. But basically that's making up the nose wheel well underneath the cockpit and then you obviously the cockpit sits down on top of this one and then obviously we've got the instrument panel being fitted on there just like that then we're down into the engines already so we've got some engines being fitted down in there for the rear parts okay and then obviously they're being fitted in got you now sort of making sense so this little tab system is a great way of keeping the spread correct so we don't end up with joins down the actual wing seam which is obviously a bit of a trait with phantoms okay so that's actually quite a nice way of doing it the other tabs should make up a really nice section in there and then obviously we've got the engine so we don't get full length engines what we're going to get is obviously first stage compressor and then the rear nozzles down here at the back section down on here the reason this panel is always separate if you don't know is obviously you get a navy version and then you obviously get the air force version the air force version because they use the boom system the flying boom uh, with the probe that goes into this section navies don't so they don't have it so that if you ever wonder why they're always different that's the reason in there then it's obviously talking about a little bit of cleanup uh, work down in here and you're actually doing the wheel wells and obviously there's some little holes to open up as round in this one as well okay then we've got this spar system which looks really really nice actually so well not only is it going to hopefully give you a fantastic fit it will give good strength right the way through but it also adds details for underneath as well uh, for the auxiliary uh, air intake down underneath there so that's pretty nice with all of those going in so you're building up your wheel wells all your sections various bits and pieces and then you can drop it all in there like that okay usual thing then with phantoms this underside will come up and we're hopeful because we've got all of this stuff in here so we've got the spa system on the lower wing and obviously you've got those points at the top we should end up with actually a really solid good fit down into there front sections going on under here and again i know a lot has been spoken about this could be then turned into an rf version and all the rest of it reconnaissance no that would need an entire new front end not just the bottom i think they've done it this way purely for molding to crispen up the detail down underneath here uh, for the actual sparrow bays and things like that it's easier to do it as a separate all right so that's those all going down in there like that one intake system obviously being fitted into this one it looks like as i said we do get full length intakes down to that first stage of the j79 down in there as well and there's a couple of decals and little aerials as well to pop in there at the same time okay and then those are being fitted in there just like that tailplanes again this is where your old metals come in and all the rest of it so you do lots of work down in here and a little bit different for the phantom this one is that you get the one piece wing section down the back normally you plug in each side or there's a little spar this is a fixed one that goes in there right the way through okay so that's that one in there just like that and then you've got the clamshell as i call it which is the underside the sort of um, heat area behind the engines and underneath the tail so these are being fitted in there your poly caps going down in there and everything so that would be a movable tail system in there and then we've got the hook tail hook being fitted down in there j79 engines obviously they're the smaller ones uh, if you're used to using the ones on the f4j so those are being fitted down in there and then we've got the doors so we've actually got uh, sections of doors going in so alignment of the doors should be really really straightforward so they'll be pushed down in there the only drawback to that is then i don't think that you're going to be you're going to have to do some surgery to do it in flight okay so that's not a mass problem anyway new nose wheel being fitted down there we've got the uh, electronics scoops at the front they're the cooling intake scoops for all the electrics so those are being fitted down in there as well nose wheel system being fitted in and uh, so that's that system going through there pretty much straightforward and then the doors the various things and then obviously we've got the uh, the little bulge underneath the nose so that one's being fitted in there is different versions of these which they are calling out as well there's a myriad of different ones as you'll know and then obviously f4j just has the blade underneath main gear system going together no problem at all again and then this route the actual air system with these uh, hydraulic doors underneath there being fitted in as a box section which is nice as well wing fold so we've got the option so you can fold up the wings uh, the ailerons as well are positionable as well and obviously we've got the speed brakes down underneath as well so for those being fitted so again we've got wing fold sections up and down as well interesting way of doing it so that's quite nice okay and then obviously just down in here we've got the various uh, control surfaces down in here for the actual flaps 
uh, up and down positions and the speed brakes as we were talking about before. So I don't know if it's interchangeable. We'll have to see if we've got enough to do that one. Okay, so that's that system being put down in there as well. And then we've got the Navy's style of pylons as well. So again, there's differences between the Navy and the Air Force ones. So these are the different ones. These are the pointy ones, as I call it. So those are being fitted down into there. And then we've got sparrows, sidewinders, and your weapons fit. Pretty much standard. Fuel tanks obviously being fitted down in there. Obviously, you've got your center line one, which I can't remember exactly the literage now or the gallonage, I should say. But you get the big one underneath and then the slinky ones on the side. Those are being fitted down into there. We've got the spray uh, braces and the various things being put down in there. So, fixing those stops things rattling around. And again, we've got the tail. So, tail being fitted on. Okay, last thing, got the fuel dump uh, being put on the back as well, the various things for the tail. And then it's back to the seats. And again, looking very nice actually, the seats. So we've got the seats, the cushions, all the survival equipment areas being put in there, things like that. We've got the figures. So obviously we get seated crew, we've got different helmets as well for the different squadrons that you can actually get. So those are being fitted down into that one. And then obviously we've got the aft station or the weapon systems area, the Wizzo down at the back. Uh, he's got all his gear down in there and then into the front. So we've got the cockpit. Again, it's teaching you just to nick out these little parts in here from your sprue tabs. And then we've got your HUD uh, and then obviously instrument panels and things like that. The combings going in. Again, open or closed. You do get them all set, which you probably have to cut yourself unless they've changed something. And then the interiors for the glasswork. So one piece if you want it all closed up, multi-part if you want it all open. And the big thing with the Phantom that we haven't seen quite before, although we did see it on the Tomcat, is this one piece uh, front going on as well. So that means gluing them in and not having the seam around the canopy is, should be really nice. Okay, so that's all of those down in there. Again, Navy option, obviously on this side, we've got the refueling probe for air to air refueling. And we've got the step down underneath and a couple of blade antennas to take care of. And it's done. Sounds really easy, doesn't it? I, you know, it sounds really complex and I've built, I don't know, maybe a hundred phantoms over the year in various scales. So it's it's one of those ones where that seems really, really complicated and it shouldn't be. I think we do have a one-to-one -one scale though, which we do. Uh, decal thing down in here for your placement for the chart, which is bigger than I can show you, but you can see got really, really nice markings on these ones down in here. So basically what we got down in here, this is the old Screaming Eagles, remember rightly, uh, from the Coral Sea. So VF-51. Uh, very nice down in there. So again, nice. And the, I love this one. This is really cool because when the gear's down, it's got the claws, the talons are down. Brilliant. Okay. Here's my all-time favourite uh, scheme of ever though, uh, and that's the F4B in the Sundowners. Uh, again, such an iconic. So VF111 uh, off the Coral Sea. Uh, again, I've done this marking many, many times and I've got it in my stash as well. It always makes me smile. Okay, so that's that one. And then a couple more of your options we got down in here. Again, looking really very, very nice with these ones. Bit of a classic one down in here off the Midway VF61. Uh, so that's really, really nice from the chargers. And again, it's right, it's very nice with this black tail. And they have the grey walkways as well. So it's actually quite a striking scheme underneath, pretty much just white. And then, because it's a phantom, and oh, okay, that's helped out. Normally a Phantom is covered in thousands of, of um, decals, uh, but actually what they've done, they've broken them up into sections to make them a bit more palatable about putting them all on. So anybody's ever done a Phantom knows you're in for a world of pain when you get to that section because there is literally so much of them. Okay, so next up we've got the, is heat sealed? It is, okay, so we'll just zip on right in here. So we've got the decals. So first up, as you can see, just down in here, looking pretty nice. And again, this is quite nice the way they've done this business, because also it's laid out like the aircraft as well. So that's quite nice. Weapon ones over here, harnesses. And then over here, you might notice this is for the helmets. Again, really very nice. Typical of Tammy, and I know Tammy get a bit of flack for having really thick decals but they are solid color. And sometimes that's pretty much what you're after, okay? So again, very, very colorful, very, very nice. They've got a nice satin look to them. So there you go, beautifully done. Very, very nice. You're not gonna go wrong with any of those, let's face it. Okay, so last up just down in here, let me get them out. 
is the and we're just going to check because it turns out some of the car ones they do do it but no they haven't on here again so you have to cut them out yourself but you have got a mask set but honestly Tammy I've been saying it forever now just spend another couple of pence and have them die cut you know, make the modeler's life so much easier than having to go around and cut them out yourself because by the time you cut them out yourself you might as well just bung it neat on the aircraft and do it manually so um, yeah okay very very nice indeed so what we just need to do is that place that in there keep that safe okay so let's start with the fuselage oh, oh, look, we're all falling off everywhere already okay so again I'll kill myself on the staples okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to have to make a bit of room here okay so looks pretty nice okay so i think what we're looking at here the reason they've done this side part just down in here is because of this refueling area and again you can sort of imagine that on this side of the sprue you're going to get another version perhaps an air force version maybe a c is going to come out so it's not going to have that into it and that's why they've done it that way which is pretty much what I'd expect them to do. But generally, really nice. We've got the vanes already placed down in here. As you can see, it's that fine. My camera is really struggling to find it, but it has got beautifully, beautifully fine details recessed. We've got all the panel lines. We've got all the, obviously, the riveting, the various parts, but it is so fine. My camera is really struggling because of the texture on this as well but hopefully you guys can see it this is that top part as you can see run along here again it's nice and solid so it should make the easier of the other one gone in the only thing that i'm not a fan of is this cutaway clamshell because you could end up with a seam down in here and that's going to be horrible to try and fix so i'd rather have had it as a one piece again the, the there is a small change between different versions of phantoms on this and that's why they've cut this area off but again it just makes it somewhat of a, an annoyance when you're going around with it interior wise as you can imagine you get a little bit of framework up on these which is absolutely fine and down in here but most of it is going to be tucked away inside a phantom if you've ever built one you'll know what i mean okay so uh, okay let's have a look at the wings Okay, so wing sections, really nice. So again, this is uh, part of the thing with the Phantoms and clearly I know you far too much, but obviously different Phantoms have different types of things going on. One of the big things is this wing section. There's a thicker tire on later ones and you have a bulge over these areas. Obviously this is the early ones, they're flatter. So again, it's all pointing to a lot more versions coming down the line on the Phantom family, which is really nice. But generally looking on the close up, as you can probably see, Again, it's that fine, my camera is struggling to pick even this out. But there's beautiful details in all of this, no problem at all. It's typical Tamiya. Here's your different noses down at the bottom. We've got your wheel wells, the other parts just down on here, and the actual tops of the wings as well, looking very, very nice. There's a bit of ghosting, but that ghosting it hasn't come through. That's just because it is, a, catch it, I hope you'll see it, but it's very thin so that's actually really really thin and again it's got full riveting detail on here it's raised detail which is absolutely gorgeous very very nice indeed but if you hold it up to the light in fact i will show you how thin this is okay just to give you an idea of how thin these are that's how thin it literally is it's incredibly thin on these areas uh, so you know as you can see they've really thinned it out to an inch of its life rejection molding well and talk about how tamia doesn't push the envelope but clearly when you see things like that you can see they really have they've uh, you know got it very thin and that's why you got this sort of texture just this little texture on the top that's because it's incredibly thin at that point but generally really nice indeed okay so down in here we have the actual so this is your winglets uh, the bits that stick up at the end of the wings the ones that actually fold up and again you always get loads of detail on these top parts just trying to catch in the light you can probably see there's loads of details down in there that's really nice the seats again look 
very, very tidy, very nice indeed. We've got the flame holder for the afterburner section down in here, and obviously we've got the front end of the J79 down in there as well. Really very nice. The figure looks pretty good as well with all his survival equipment, all the various bits and pieces. And again, really nice with the seats, with the cushions and the backs and the various parts. That all looks very nice. Inside the engine, again, loads of detail down in here, actually in the actual exhausts. Very nice. We don't have weight on wheels, they are just normal wheels. But also down in here we've got the actual nozzle and then the feathers off the back for the nozzle. Looking pretty darn nice as well. Again, we've only looks like got the open option. You can't really have the closed. Not that it was in it that often, but uh, yeah. That all looks very, very nice indeed. Very clean. And again, inside of the feathers, we don't have any injector parts or anything getting in, making it messy. So that's nice and clean. So that should be very straightforward for that one. Okay. <clears throat> And then obviously match pair for the other side. So it looks like you will be able to have both options for the wings. So you can actually do it displayed wings down or folded up as well, whichever way you want to go around with it, which is a nice touch because we get two lots down in there. Okay, so. Okay, so in here we've got some poly caps. We'll keep those nice and safe. Couple of poly caps we we're talking about. And then again, Looking pretty nice. So we got the actual the tails, and then we've got the wing fold system and the various things. So again, I think if we go this way around, we've got some of the details. This is that area between the engines for the auxiliary. We've got the different tails on here, uh, different types of tails. Beautiful work. So we've got seamless, or well, it's not seamless, but injection pinless. Uh, intakes so you haven't got to do any sanding or taking care of that this is the wings area so this one on this side being flat as you can see is obviously for the wings down and locked and then for the folded one so you've got all the mechanical stuff in the middle as well down in there so you do get both options moving a bit further up we've actually got the this is that clamshell area underneath the tails that's there and there's your tails as well one piece just in there with the leading edge curves and all the parts that's all looking very nice indeed so yeah nice nice and sharp it's very sh the only thing the way i describe this at the moment it's incredibly sharp crisp stuff looks good okay so okay this is that wing spar system we were talking about down in here with all of this detail which is nice we've got the center line fuel tanks and then obviously we've got other pylons here for the outer types and then obviously we've got the uh, flaps down in here underside of the flaps various details as you can probably see down in here this is some nice work so you've got that center box is going to drop in there the doors will be open and if you squint and you're on your knees and you've got a mirror you might just see this okay so that's a nice touch but this spa system really should lock it together and also even we've got more reinforcements down in here as well just to give a bit more rigidity which means it should line up very, very nicely, but generally very good indeed. Clearly being Tammy, I haven't seen a single, well, anything horrible because, oh look, this one's heat sealed. Okay. Uh, because what we've got, no flash, there's no sink marks because you don't really see that on Tamiya. Okay, so tailplane, molded rudder, unusual. I didn't think it would be molded, but there we go. But anyway, there's your, rudder system that's your hook down at the bottom all the different areas this is your dump valve down here at the back for the tail okay this is the bottom this is what we're talking about i know a lot of people have sort of jumped in saying about that oh well look they must be doing the recce version because of the bottom plate you need to do front fuselage for that because it's squared i think the reason they've done it is purely because the recessed this has probably got the most accurate recess i've seen on a kit for the Sparrow missile. It really does go almost halfway in. Um, and But if you're doing it from other molding ways, they make them shallower just to be able to get them out of the mold and all the rest of it. But clearly this one's got it in there right the way through. And also it's got the slits for having the actual fins go in. Whereas obviously most people just don't bother putting those in. Okay, so nose door, various items down in here. This is the latch and the lock for the nose gear. Cockpit bits down in here. So we've got the actual instrument comb in over the top, instrument panel, side panels, all the various gubbins down in there. And again, I think the reason it's on this sprue is purely because of this is like the B version 
and then obviously as other version comes along you'll have different bottoms they've got different grills in them and stuff like that as well so that's why that is there I'm pretty sure okay so interesting because this is the intakes so I'll put it in So, the intakes themselves, you've got one little dot going to be down in there, but we have got some ejector pins. There's an ejector pin there. I thought it's too good to be true. <laughs> anyway, there's the other gubbins of your cockpit. As I said, it's all going to come alive with all the panelling and the various bits and pieces down in there. But uh, obviously, we're just looking on the blind side for pin marks, and we found some. A bit weird. Anyway, so on the top, again, we've got the round doors. Uh, they're going to fit onto the other side of this one, just down in here. And then obviously we've got all the parts around for the cockpit. So we've got some hands down in there as well, the back parts, the actual railings around the canopy. We've got the actual uh, bulkheads inside the cockpit. There's your nose areas, things like that, right the way through. So lots of detail. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, so another specifics, I do believe. So here we are, sprue M, different tails. So we've got two lots of tails in there, so we have to do, okay, so the other one has that splitted uh, veinage along the front here. It's like a, a little lip on it right the way through. This is the lipless one. So that's why they've done both versions on that one as well. And again, we've got this one over here because you've got the aerials onto it. No section with the cutout, obviously, for all the parts underneath. This area is down between the burners, and then obviously you'd have the hook just coming back here. And this is your engine covers that are going to go on the side parts. So pretty much specific again to that particular model. And again, another specific one is this one, because, again, this is the thing about, we were talking about the Navy version. So we've got all the Navy bits in here. So we've got the Navy pylons, we've got the refueling probe areas, uh, obviously with the gear, these little guys just down in this corner being the little radar warning receivers. And again, we've got the flat without the actual uh, docking station for the uh, air to air refueling. Sway braces just down the side here. All looks pretty nice indeed. That probe, to be honest, normally I would say about, oh, replace them because they look horrible. That looks pretty nice as well. So that's very, very nicely done. Some good detail on that one right the way through and again there is the odd little ejector pin but this is Tamiya after all try and catch it in the light there they all go they will light up so uh, yeah there is a few of those in there to take care of but again getting picky with the swipe of a sanding stick don't think we need to open these because we've all seen sparrows before and again standard ones very nice indeed pretty much out of the Tomcat kit I think so very very nice Okay, last up, we've got the clear parts. So, I'm going to be a bit careful getting this out of here. So, they put it on this thing. <laughs> Is it centrifuged it? It's lovely and clear. Look at that. So, anyway, this little guy over here is your nose one. As you can see, there's no distortion whatsoever. Beautifully clear and crisp and this is what we're saying no little seam underneath the the actual cockpit because it's all one thing so it's all panel lined and then again multiple ones so obviously we've got the rear sorry the front and then we've got the rear canopy on that side and then we've got the bow between the two clever way they've done it okay and then this little guy which i don't think we need to get out really you see is the one piece version so if you're going to have it closed up or quick tip if you want to do some mask it up use one as the mask and then the other ones keep the best that's the way I do it there we go it's done it's here to be honest this kit has been spoken about for quite a long time now uh, and then obviously it was released to the public and everyone's like oh Tammy's done a phantom and all the rest of it to be honest I think Tammy is playing safe as normal you know let's face it they do the 109s they do spitfires they they usually play pretty safe we're never going to see a real left wing type model come out from them because they do stuff that ships and again a lot has been said about the price so it is a hundred quid for a phantom 
and you have got options out there and I've done an entire show about this but again this is one of these things where you pay your money and you buy your kit if you know let's face it your money's not really a mass problem for you you're a big fan of the hobby you're going to get probably at least 50 hours even if you just chucked it together out of building this together it's still relatively a cheap kit okay the amount of hours you're going to put into it and all the rest of it it's a beautiful kit. It's got nice options down there. It's got nice detail. I don't think you're going to need any aftermarket because let's face it, the only thing I would normally say for a Phantom is a seat. The seats look pretty good on their own, but if you're putting a pilot figure who's sat on it, you're not going to need that either. So you're not going to worry about any aftermarket on this. The detail is in there right the way through. So I'm not thinking, oh, well, we need nozzles for it now. We need new intakes because they're rubbish and we need seats and some interior as you would perhaps with an older kit and an older kit you might be paying 40 quid for. OK, but then by the time you've bought the aftermarket bits to it, you're getting near the sort of £75, £85 range. And then you might think, well, just pay the little bit extra. I've got that gorgeous thing of Tamiya and you know it's going to go together. You know it's going to be an amazing fit. You know it's going to be just a dream build all the way through. So, you know, like I always say, there's the cheap versions out there, you know, the budget ones. And then obviously you've got the Academy kit, which I still think is an amazing kit. It's a very, very nice kit. Then obviously you've got the sort of Zucamoris of this world coming along, doing their ones. And now obviously Tammy has jumped in as well. I think next up, we're probably going to see the Air Force version. We're going to see the C's and D's out. And then we're definitely going to see a J, let's face it, because that's standard for it. What I'm hopeful though is Tamiya will do a little bit like the Zucamori one. We see the long nose Phantoms is in we'll get the E's and the F's and things like that as well because I think they are absolutely fantastic and it will really round off the range really really nicely. So my overall opinion is it's beautiful. It's expensive but it is beautiful and if I had a hundred quid and I was thinking about getting a Phantom that's the one that I'd actually get hands down no problem at all. But anyway personal choices. Anyway that is the Tamiya F4B Phantom 2 in 148 scale.